Welcome to the World of Innovation, a special series presented to you by World Insight, featuring exclusive interviews with innovators, entrepreneurs, thinkers, and educators about the realities and future of innovation in our world today. The innovative spirit usually becomes evident early in life. That's true for many of the world's most innovative icons, such as Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg. Many young people around the world are following in the footsteps of these icons, such as the one that we are going to meet today, Zhao Bowen from China, a young entrepreneur who dropped out of high school to start his own research lab and company. That is after working for years as intern and researcher with a major research institute and gene development company. Before we hear his story, let's take a look at this. Defying the odds, at only 24 years old, this young man is running his own biotech company, Quanti Health, which focuses on molecular health testing. Zhao Buowen is not known for sticking to the beaten path, unlike most of his peers. At the age of 17, while most of his high school classmates were preparing for the college entrance exam, Zhao decided to drop out of school. Even two years before that, Zhao had already taken up an internship in the Chinese Academy of Agricultural Sciences to join a team working on the DNA sequence of a cucumber. After bidding farewell to high school, Zhao joined a research team at the Beijing Genomics Institute, known as BGI, now the world's largest genomics organization based in the southern Chinese city of Shenzhen. There, he led a mind-bogglingly complex enterprise, searching for patterns among thousands of gene variations that might shed light on the biological basis of human intelligence. It was the largest project of its kind in the world. And in 2014, Zhao left BGI and started his own company, Making a difference is not easy, especially at such a young age. And this begs a big question. What on earth had altered Zhao's life path? I happened to uh, meet with one of the, you know, I believe the greatest educator in, in, in the Chinese Academy of Agricultural Science. He was my first tutor. Uh, his name was uh, Huang Xianwen. And uh, he actually believed that uh, uh, the state-owned institutes should uh, spend some time and efforts on educating the young. So he started the project on, on, on how to say, bring, bring, let the children grow uh, beyond, besides the scientists. So that was his plan, and I was the first. Oh. I believe I, I, I'm not the last. Uh, at that time, I had a choice. I had a chance to be in Shenzhen in the BGI, the Beijing Genomics Institute, for an intern. So, you know, that was just like a regular summer intern uh, along with other high school students. But, you know, when I stayed there for only a month, and I found that, you know, I had a passion in what I was doing there. And I believe that maybe for me, the best choice was to stay there. BGI was like a college to me. So in Shenzhen, there, I was working with a very small team called the Scientific Special Force. Okay. You know, it's like, you know, when, when there is a very hard problem, you give it to the SSR and they tackle the problem. So whatever the cost is. So we worked like day and night over time and it was, it feels so good. How is that going to be critical for you to make your own choice eventually in research? It's kind of uh, interesting. Unlike most people would have uh, thought about, the research in genomics are actually not in the lab, get your hands dirty, it's not like that. Uh, it's all about data. It's a lot, all about information. Mm -hmm. You know, there, uh, in BGI, in Huada, there were a, a certain, uh, how to say, a, a process line that turns the biomaterials uh, into the data, into the data. So the DNA and other matters were extracted and uh, be sequenced. That's a process called sequenced. So you, you basically read out the, the sequence of all the four bases, A, T, C, G, A, T, C, G, and that became a file on the computer. And after that was our, our job, our work. We deal with all the, 
all the data, all the numbers, and we try to calculate uh, the, the, all the possibilities and the likelihoods and the correlation between different data. The correlation between the what we call the genotype, what happens in the gene, and the phenotype, what happens in the, how to say, in the macro world. How much advantage do you think you have over some of the others in the team in terms of using computers mm -hmm. and be able to do data analysis without you know, a higher education in the field? Would you be able to do it? You know, I, uh, it's hard to say that uh, if I have advantage. I, I think the answer is yes and no. Because uh, I have to say I, uh, the lack of um, education in the university uh, it sometimes make me feel that I lack of some, you know, systematic knowledge of about the whole thing, about the history, about the history of this uh, biology and genetics and uh, a lot of other things. But since we're we're actually doing genomics, it's a very very new field, and the uh, actually the whole technology is sped up after 2007, actually. So when I was there, 2009, it was like the beginning of a boom. And for me, at that time, lack of the knowledge of the history became an advantage because I have no burden at all. Mm -hmm. I just start from ground zero and I just need to learn more and do more and work hard. So you feel you're burden free while some of the others in the field for a long time could in a way overshadowed by what they knew before? Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there was a fa famous line in the, in the Star Wars. It says, you, sometimes you have to unlearn something to learn something. I believe that word are, 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 are telling the people with a lot of experience in, in one field when he's facing a new thing. And now you're moving to another field. Do you have to unlearn what you learned before in order to really a learn lot, new things. Tell a me about lot. it. Tell I have to it. say, when I changed from studying a human being, what we call the big genomes, because uh, the genome of mammal and the plants are very big. It contains several gigas of data. But when we changed to study the very small microbes, the germs and the virus. That's what you're doing right now. Exactly. And we're studying the community of a lot of germs. You can say it's, uh, <laughs> uh, it's a lot. It's really a lot. About 100 trillions, you know. That's a very big number. And the way of studying the, those genes, uh, how to say, from the micro level, uh, they are the same. We use the same tools, same technique, but from the macro level, if you want to see the whole picture, mm -hmm. it's totally different. It's totally different. I, I have to unlearn a lot to adapt to the, the new way of thinking. It was kind of interesting because it's a new field, and the, uh, the, the field of metagenomics, it actually started like five years ago. So it's a very young, uh, subject and there it means that it lacks enough we, we lack enough tools and enough method on researching mm. so a lot of methods that we use are actually or even the new methods that we invented were based on the uh, experience and knowledge about the fields that we used to work with before. That was the, you know, the big genomes and the, the human genome, the, the animal genome. It was different. I have to say it was different. Because now we're actually not anymore studying one organisms. We're studying thousands of organisms mm -hmm. all together. Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg were not just high school dropouts who started up companies. They also had to conquer all kinds of difficulties before achieving success. Following in their footsteps, Zhao Boawen is also facing challenges of his own. His company is now researching on human microbiomes and is working to popularize the gut microbiome test, a new way of assessing health. Zhao says he works about 14 hours each day, supervising a team of researchers and talking to potential investors. But his study, only a few decades old worldwide, is brand new in China. Attracting and convincing investors remain a major challenge for the young innovator. Was it easy for them to be convinced? Uh, of course not. What did you do then? 
you know, they asked a million questions, but I believe the, the whole point, all the questions were around one thing, that is, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> and these could be the science guy, and they still have a difficulty understanding what you're doing. Yeah, because because it was just too new to application science. So now, if I ask you, what do you do? What do you do? How you can briefly tell us, what do you do? Well, you know, nowadays, to a general market guy, I would tell, tell them that I study shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hope that's not yeah. offense. What because, do you mean? You know, we, because we studied the microbes, the germs in your gut, so there's a way that we have to sample that. Mm -hmm. And we sample from the feces. The fecal sample of anybody, we take that, it, it sounds not very good, but it's science, you know. And we take that and do the very full uh, high-end analysis. Does it work? It works. It works like magic. <laughs> 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 to explain things in very simple terms, right? Yeah, it is just like, you know, now you take the blood and you can see a lot of uh, uh, factors. And uh, one day it will be like you take some Thesis, and we can also see like more than that, millions of factors, and they're all related to different systematic diseases, including the type 2 diabetes, right. the cardiovascular diseases, and even, you know, depression. So now, where are you going mm. from here? Three steps. And step one is what we're doing right now, and we believe that uh, we have achieved that already. So uh, it's about standardizing and make all of those science theory into one single application. Mm -hmm. That is the gut microbiome test. So now we're trying to popularize a new form of test that only take a few fecal. So actually it's even safer than taking the blood because the blood test is invasive and taking the fecal sample is not invasive. And from that sample, we can see a lot, as I said, millions of uh, factors. But it was all about how to distinguish which factor are, 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 how to say, are good enough for right. the medical test. What so about that's the second step one. stage? The second stage is about, based on those knowledge, we can do some certain intervention on the body, on the microbes, the little germs inside your body, and try to make them serve you make them work for you and so that your health can be improved. For example, imagine you can, you can lose your weight without changing of diet, mm. but only the changing of the, the little germs. All right, and the third stage? The third stage is that based on the knowledge that we accumulated from the co correlation of those genotype in the germs and the, you know, the phenotype of the body, we can develop, uh, hopefully, we can develop some certain medicine, some new medicine. And those medicines were not based on the chemical compounds, but based on the microorganisms. Wow, it's amazing. How far away from there, the final stage? I will say that the final stage will be within 10 years, of course. You know, your story, many would say, would remind them of the story of Bill Gates, who also dropped out from high school and went on to build his own business. Mm -hmm. But I just wonder from your perspective, what do you think about his story compared to yours? And what kind of future are you looking at? I mean, Bill Gates, there's only one in the world. Uh, what do you make of the probably enormous amount of challenges that's in front of you? You know, talking about Bill Gates, uh, you know, my first English name was actually Bill when I was really, <laughs> really young, like three years old. Is he old, your right? idol? Yeah, that time I just uh, I just heard about that name a lot, and the English teacher asked me to choose an English name. Actually, I don't understand why. You know, <laughs> we all have an English name, <laughs> and I said Bill. But you know, later uh, later I, I I started to use the name Bowen. That was just my Chinese pinyin, and in the same time, I believe that is a good name. So. I believe that uh, that also reflects my uh, change of the you know thinking of the whole thing. There's only one Bill Gates, and I would never become another Bill Gates, or Bill Gates in China, or Bill Gates in the world. It doesn't make any 
sense to me. To me, I just want to be the first Bowen, Bowen Zhao. Mm -hmm. And that was good enough to me. So I do things that I really want to do. And I would be really excited and re would be pleased if I succeed. If those uh, who are willing to jump into entrepreneurship from China, listening to your story, what advice would you like to give them? Be careful, but since you are young, do what you want. That's important. Do you give yourself a time limit as to how long you want to try? No. I will, well, I have to say that nowadays it was already very hard for me to imagine what my life would be without my company, without my career and this way of lifestyle. I knew that I missed a lot of things, but I also gained a lot of things. So it's a trade-off, you know? It's like business. There's always trade-off. You have to give away something in order to gain something. And it's fair enough to me, and I am satisfied with this outcome. Bowen, such a pleasure to have you on our program. From the bottom of my heart, all the best to you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so, you. Much. All the best. Thank you so much.